Mo. How you doing this morning? How you doing? I'm fine. I'm good girlfriends with Veronica. I know she told me. I know she was going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that thing don't let nothing rest out of you. <laughs> That's why I ain't never borrowed no money from her, because I ain't wanted to be up on me. <laughs> How you pronounce your name? Shaletta. Shaletta. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yeah, y'all. Producer you, was saying Shalita, so hey, I was just trying to confirm. It. Oh yeah, you could just say letter <laughs> if you get confused. That's okay. fine. Okay, and um, they're gonna type it and ship it to me, so we're just gonna do it over the phone okay. if that's okay with you, and we yeah, can yeah. um, huh? Yeah, no problem. We're gonna okay. do it over the phone. Yeah, we're just gonna do it like this. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, just Maurice Cheek. Oh, we're still doing it on yeah, camera. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so, you, so so I'm gonna be on the phone. You're gonna be on camera. So we'll uh, we'll go ahead and get started. I'll do a little introduction and then um, just start. We'll just start chatting. Okay. Maurice Cheek, uh, NBA All Star, now uh, NBA coach, joins me on the phone. Mr. Cheeks, it is an honor to have you here with us this morning on Crossroads. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. Well, thanks for having me. Now I called you because uh, a friend of mine has the gout. Right. And he didn't want to go to the doctor. You know, you men, you know, y'all have to be, you know, have a bullet wound in you, somebody stab you <laughs> in the neck for you to want to go to see a physician. And and uh, my girlfriend said, well, you know, talk to Mo because he has the gout, and not only does he have the gout, but he is educating people about this disease. You you have the gout? <laughs> I have gout. It's a form of arthritis, and it's a very, very painful arthritis. And, uh, you know, he may not understand why he has it. Trying, he, the main thing is that he goes to the doctor. I think it, that's the main thing. And, and I myself am fortunate to have a trainer and, a, and doctors at my disposal. And I think if he, excuse me, he has to make sure he goes to the doctor because there are different things that the doctor can tell him that I cannot tell him mm -hmm. to make sure that he understands about it. And, and he can also go to uh www.gouteducation.org mm -hmm. and he can get more information on it but it is something that he cannot explain to you about the pain because it's a very very painful condition and and he may be a little hesitant about going to the doctor but if it's not treated it can be it can have long-term effects on it so the main thing is that he goes to the doctor and, and gets it treated so how did you get diagnosed you were just having these pains and had somebody look at you or yeah, I first got diagnosed when I was in Portland, and um, I thought it was a, a a shoe. I had tried, I had a shoe on, and I thought it was a brand new shoe, and I thought my foot was swelling up because of that. And then the, the pain continued, continued, and it got worse. And I went to the doctor, and that's what they um, diagnosed me with with gout. And I didn't understand it. I had really never heard of it before. And I think mm -hmm. it's five million people that are affected by it, and not a lot of people understand this condition. And I think uh, the more people talk about it that's why I'm here talking about it so there are a lot of people that are affected by it as I mentioned five million people and if more people talk about it and try and get their understanding of what it is and not just think it's going to go away because it's, because it's not going to go away it's something that persists and it, it can be very painful to you and just make sure he goes to GodEducation.org to get more information on it. Now how have you treated this disease because you've obviously been living with it you've been battling through it um you you've been treating this condition how how have you how, how have you taken care of yourself well again i've always had a trainer and a doctor at my disposal and and there are different things that are can be treated for it and and that's the reason why he has to go to the doctor because if you go to the doctor there are different things that different people um, different doctors can tell you about um, controlling your diet is one of them, and I make sure I control my diet. I'm not I'm not a heavy person, um, and I think a lot of people have that misconception that it is a heavy person that mm -hmm. gets this. And I think the main thing is that you go to the doctor because a different thing, different treatments that it, that the doctor can tell you about. Now enough about this gout stuff because you got me thinking <laughs> I got pains in my foot this morning. I'm looking and find, trying to find out what's wrong with me. <laughs> You guys did a great job this past season. The 76ers were in the playoffs. What what happened over there? You guys just came alive this year. Uh, we had some young guys. The young guys just kind of stayed with the program. We were we were um, not as good early on. We had some young guys that stayed with the program that that we started out on, and then as a result, we got some wins out of it. And fortunately for us, we were able to make the playoffs. And we're just looking to get better night in night out, and hopefully um, next season will be even better. So what do you have planned for next season? Because you pulled the rabbit out of the hat this season, and nobody <laughs> saw you coming. 
So what what do you got planned for next season? Well, it's just that our young guys are going to get better. I think that was one of the main things that happened throughout this season, that our young guys got better. And I think there's a misconception of putting young guys out on the floor that they have to um, – be seasoned veterans and we've proved that you can put young guys out on the floor and they can learn on the fly and that's exactly what happened so we know people are going to be ready for us next season and we're going to just get better throughout this off season now what does it do uh for you when you see those young guys out there playing does it remind you of of the days back when you <laughs> you were you know the young guy on the team the rookie you know everybody you know was looking at a skinny little mo cheeks little young mo cheeks <laughs> Well, it's a little different. When I was when I was playing uh, just a couple years ago, yeah. Uh, <laughs> when I was playing a couple years ago, I was the only young guy on the team. Nowadays, we have four or five young guys on the team at the same time. So each one of those guys are learning a little bit. But it makes a coach proud when you see young guys out there. They're trying, they're listening, and they're putting their efforts out on the floor. And that's exactly one of the reasons why we won during this season. Now, Mo, how has basketball changed since um, back when you were playing to now? I remember when when you were playing and Dr. J, you know, people would look up to the basketball players as role models, and now the parents are saying, you know, these guys have the tattoos and they're getting in trouble off the off the court, and you know, we need to find some other role models for our kids. You know, is there a, a difference in 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 the role model situation, especially for young black kids who adore basketball players and football players? That you know, is, is there has there a change happened? Well, there's a lot, a lot of good basketball players and a lot of good sports people, period. It's not just um, people with tattoos. And, and you can have a tattoo and still be a, a good player, a good person, all those things. There's not a, that's, that's a misconception of people having a tattoo and not a good person. So I think, you know, years ago maybe we didn't have tattoos, but I think you have a lot of good uh, people playing sports, period, not just basketball, football, baseball. You have a lot of good people. And our, we have a lot of kids watching us and always look, looking at the things we do, things we say. And I think we have a lot of kids that have a lot of positive role models in sports, period. I think they have a lot to a lot to look forward to when you're watching sports. And, and we have a lot of good, our, myself, we have a lot of good people on mm-hmm. my team. At, and you can look at our team as an example because we have some guys with tattoos, but they're good people. And I think if you look at them as the people they are and not just what's on their body, you'll find a lot of good things in some people. Now, you've made the progression from player, assistant coach, head coach. Are you going to move up in the ranks anymore? What's the next plan for Mo Cheek's uh, NBA career there? Well, right now I'm just sticking to trying to coach, be the best coach I can possibly be and, and let the future take care of itself. But right now I'm trying to make the Philadelphia 76 play as best they possibly can, be the best they can be on and off the court, and we'll see what happens in the future later on. All right. And uh, any words of advice for young guys who are looking at the show this morning and, and, and wanting to follow in your footsteps? What advice would you give them? Well, just be true to yourself. Um, whatever you're capable of doing, don't let anyone tell you you can't do it, but be true to yourself and understand what you have to do to be. You don't have to be great, just be good. 